Good morning. Good morning. Glad that you are here. We have some uh, other people still coming in to join us, and so uh, just glad that you are here. If you're a guest, we're thankful that you have come to worship with us. Right in front of you in the back of the pew is a connection card. If you would please pull that out, fill out the information, and drop it either in the offering plate or in one of the boxes that are going around the room or in, in the room. Uh, that way we could get to know each other a little bit. Sure would appreciate that opportunity. Now, some of you kind of are whispering to each other, because did he say offering plate? Yes. So we have not passed an offering plate in quite some time, uh, but this morning we will be doing that. And so if you have your offering, feel free to put it in that offering plate, or if you're comfortable putting it in one of the boxes, that is great too. Just want to give you a heads up. Uh, that's called an offering plate, <laughs> if you have happened to forget. So anyway, uh, if you would just stand, go greet one another. Say good. Uh, you have, you want to announce now? Okay, hold on, hold on. All right, y'all can be seated. I have one more announcement that um, <laughs> Brother Mike asked me to announce. Um, if you are interested in doing the chaplain tra chaplaincy training, that will be held on September the 19th. That's through the Southern Baptists of Texas. And after you go through this training, then you will um, be a chaplain that can be deployed in, uh, should there be a disaster anywhere. That is coming up here at our church. Brother Mike is leading that. And it is on September the 19th. <clears throat> you need to call the church office to sign up by Wednesday, September the 14th. And you also need to go to SB texas.com and complete the intro to dr which stands for disaster relief you need to complete that before you come on the 19th so two things you need to do call the church office to sign up by the 14th log into sbtexas.com and complete the training called intro to dr lunch it begins at 10 a.m on that 19th that day and lunch will be provided for you, and all your materials will be there also. All right? If any, any more questions, you can find me after the service, and I will try to answer those, or I'll try to find uh, someone who can. But right now, now we can stand, and we can go greet one another. This is the day that the Lord hath made. So Susie was playing, and he did make a beautiful day for us to come and worship him this morning. And so let's just give him the praise and glory that he deserves, y'all. When, uh, when we became a believer, when we asked Jesus to come into our heart, not only did he save us from that fiery place called hell, he also uh, just freed us from all of our sins and our chains and shackles that we had uh, that were holding us back. And so... Let's sing about that this morning by singing I Am Free.
continue to give him worship? Y'all ever been going through a trial in your life? If you haven't, get ready. I've always heard you're either coming out of one or fixing to go into one, whatever it is. But we've all seen those times. But you know, as we go through those battles, the battle doesn't belong to us. As believers, the battle belongs to the Lord. He's already taken care of it. And all we have to do is sit back and look for the victory. Amen? And then give Him the glory for that. And so things go on around us. People come at us. Situations come at us. And they're very hard to deal with. But for the Lord, He's already won that battle. And so we need to trust in Him and just wait to see the victory. Take what the enemy meant. 
Father God, we thank you for always being victorious over all the battles. In our own strength, we cannot conquer any of that. But in your strength and your strength alone, you conquer it all. Even when we go through times when it seems that what is going on is letting the evil gain ground. What Satan means for our demise, Lord, you turn it around and you use it for your glory and for our good. Let us always look past the mountains. Let us always look past the battle to the victory that is through you. Lord, keep our eyes focused on you. We thank you for this time that we're able to gather together and lift praises to you, Lord. Thank you for each person here, Lord. Just uh, just bless them. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that's right here with us that we may worship at your feet. Lord, just be with the remainder of this service. Be with Aaron as he brings your message. Lord, speak words through him that come directly from you. Lord, through it all, we want you to be glorified, to be honored, and be praised. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we give this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're fixing to sing a song called My Beloved. We've sang it in numerous times, and um, I know the first few times that I sang it, um, I wasn't singing on the praise team at that point. And um, I would think of it, and I would think how I was thinking of the Lord as my beloved. And um, one day it dawned on me. It takes a little bit for me. And it's not about that at all. These words were written from the standpoint of the Lord looking upon his child. And when you listen to these words, knowing your heavenly Father is proclaiming this over you, it can totally change your life. When he says, you're my beloved, you're my child, you're beautiful, you're beautiful to me. When he says, I see no stain on you because you're beautiful to me. Just as those of us that are parents have probably said to our children, that same tenderness, that same gentleness, that same truth of how much we tell our children we love them, our Heavenly Father is telling us that. Times we don't even know that He is watching and singing over us. He's right there saying, you're beautiful to me, my child.
Oh, come forward. Help me with the offering, please. Pray with me, please. Lord, we love you. We're just so glad to be in your presence. And Lord, just thank you that when we come together, God, that you're here with us and that we're able to worship you and just bow down before you, Lord. I just thank you for this morning. I thank you for healing that is uh, happening in so many of our, our church members that have, have gone through trials and struggles, and God, you are there uh, through every step. We just uh, thank you that uh, Brother Mike is recovering. We look forward to his uh, complete healing and, and rejoining us, Lord. Just pray with us, you, or pray that you'll be with us through the rest of this service, and Lord, that uh, as we give to you, God, that uh, you will just use it, Lord, just to glorify your name. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen.
Amen. I mean, it's been a long time since we were able to sit back and just take the offering and worship through that and then hear, I stand, I stand in awe of you. Amen. Amen. All right. This morning we have Aaron Moraz here. He is from Guidestone, and uh, he is the director of uh, Mission Dignity, and he will tell you a little bit more about this. Aaron's been here a couple of times with us, I believe, and uh, so we're excited to have him back here. So uh, y'all pray for and listen attentively as Aaron comes to uh, speak to us today. Thank you, Jackie, and thank you for having me back. Wow, it really filled in. <laughs> wow, look at that. That is something else. Uh, well, it's good to see everybody here, So, um, and it's good to be back. I think the last time that I was here, it was 2019. You know, there was something that happened in between that time. Uh, we don't really mention it too much anymore, but we are starting to reckon time uh, now is pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. I don't know if y'all have been doing that lately, but uh, but we have. But it's a pleasure to be here, and I want y'all to know that you have one of the finest pastors in the entire state of Texas. And so, yeah, y'all can give him a hand. Uh, he has done an incredible job here at uh, First Baptist Whitesboro, and uh, just an incredible man and his family is just incredible as well and just uh, we when he asked me to come and I said uh, I said absolutely but I'm going to be praying for you that uh, you recover quickly because I know your people will miss you and so um, it's an honor to be here uh, as Jackie mentioned I am the director of Mission Dignity and Mission Dignity takes care of retired ministers and widows who are at or below the poverty level nationwide who are in the Southern Baptist Convention. And so there are over 2,500 of them that we take care of nationwide, and uh, about 67% of them are widows. So we take care of those uh, pastors and their widows until both of them pass away. And, uh, and it's just an amazing group of people. About, uh, about you know, pastors are who they are. They go as, as long as they can. And uh, usually something catastrophic happens at about 77 years old is when they become uh, in great need. And uh, then uh, when uh, they usually come to us as a couple, about age 81, the couple becomes a single. And we make a commitment to take care of both until they pass away and uh, they reach their eternal reward. We do this through donations. We don't receive any cooperative program uh, gifts. or uh, We do this totally off of, off of uh, donations of individuals and churches. And 100% of what you give goes directly to them. We don't take out any, offer, uh, any operating costs or administrative costs. 100% of what you give goes directly to them. The way that we take care of our administrative costs and operating costs is before I was even born, there was a group of guys that got together and put together an endowment that takes care of all of our operating and administrative costs, freeing us up to, uh, to take 100% of what you give, and it goes directly to them. A little over $10 million is going to be dispersed this year because of the generosity of God's people. And so thank you so much for joining with us. You can go to missiondignity.org or you can text MD Sunday to 41444 or you can hold up that phone and get that QR code off of there. I know that we're getting a little high tech now, but, uh, but you can go to mdsunday.org and, uh, or to MD Sunday 41444 and you can uh, do, uh, give your gift there. You can also take one of those bulletin inserts that are in the back, and uh, uh, again, 100% of what is given goes directly to them. I'm going to be telling some stories about them uh, throughout the uh, sermon, but I wanted to just, uh, just give you something from the Word of God that actually came from our retired ministers and widows. We contact them about once every quarter. And we always ask them, is there anything that we can pray for? 
and inevitably they never ask for themselves. You know, pastors are givers, they're not takers. And so uh, we always ask them anything we can pray for. The number one request is that revival would come to our nation. The revival would come to our nation. And so as I was praying about that and what exactly I can preach, I came to this passage in, cha in Luke chapter 22, and it is dealing with Peter and his uh, denial of Jesus. And instead of focusing on the denial of Peter, I felt led to focus on what Jesus gave to him. And what Jesus gave to him was a simple message. Return to me. Return to Jesus. And there is no greater thing that we can do in our lives than to return to Jesus. Because we are so prone to walk away from him. We are so prone to sin that the number one thing we have to remember is that we can always return to Him. And so if you would take your Bibles or your mobile devices, I know how things are, and uh, stand with me if you would, and let's read this passage together. Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. This is after Peter has said to, to Jesus, I'll never forsake you. I'll never deny you. And notice what Jesus says. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Let's pray together. Lord God, thank you so much that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you, Lord, that you are the one who beckons us to return to you. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would be with these who are here this morning, who hear this message. Lord, I pray that you would help them to return to you. Whatever they are going through, let them know that they can return and be with you. Lord, I ask that you would be upon those who are lost, that they would come to you. Lord, that they would repent of their wicked ways and turn back to you. Lord, I also pray for those who are believers in Christ, that if they have left their first love, that they would return to you. Lord God, I offer up my own heart, my mind, my mouth, and my actions, and I pray that you would speak through me. This is your time. Have your own way. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The world is crying out for an answer. And the answer is Jesus. The world is crying out for an answer. And the answer is Jesus. It's not politics. It's not relationships. It's not drugs. It's not alcohol. Everyone is seeking something in their life that will make them whole. And the answer is Jesus. Well, I don't know about you, but the last couple of years have just been really something. When you look at all that our nation has gone through, all that the people are going through, uh, all that our pastors and our churches are going through, it's just amazing what all is happening. At Guidestone Financial Resources, which used to be, used to be called the Annuity Board, uh, where I work and where Mission Dignity is. 
uh, we have seen a 40% increase in mental health claims. 40% increase in mental health claims. Think about that. People are struggling, they're hurting, and they are looking for something. And the answer is Jesus. Why is it that we look in so many other places for people to fix things in our lives but Jesus? Jesus is the only one who has the answer. And yet, so many times we are like Peter. We're looking at other things. We're thinking that we're strong enough to handle things on our own. We're thinking that we can continue on and do whatever we want to do. When in all reality, we need to be relying on the power of the Holy Spirit to strengthen and protect us so that we might be able to do all that we can for the name of Jesus. In this particular passage, Peter is being his usual self. I'll never deny you. I'll stand for you. I will go to the end for you. And Jesus says these words to him. He says, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. I don't know about you lately, but there are some times that, that Satan just seems to be sifting. <laughs> Can I get an amen? The reality is, is that Satan is always looking to sift us. He's always looking to hurt us. He is the accuser of the brethren, and he's always looking to accuse us. And notice what Jesus says. Jesus says, but I have prayed for you. The first thing we need to do and we need to learn in this passage is that Jesus still prays for us. Did you know that? Jesus still prays for us and he prays for our return. Notice in Romans chapter 8, verse 34, it says this in Romans chapter 8, verse 34. It says, It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. He also makes intercession for us. Now out of all the people who tell me that they are praying for me, the one person that I want knowing that, I, that He is praying for me is Jesus. Not too long ago, when during the pandemic, I got COVID. My wife gave it to me. And my son gave it to her. And, uh, and I was in the hospital for six days. First five days, I was feeling pretty good. I felt so good that I actually painted two of our rooms in our house. Which the doctor probably said that didn't really help. But six, seven, eight, and nine, those days, all of a sudden, I just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And I ended up in the hospital. And people were sending me texts so much that I had to turn off my phone because I was getting so many texts when I... Turned it on the next morning, there were 450 some odd texts saying that they were praying for me. And I was so thankful for all those prayer requests and for all those prayers. But there's one person who stood with me throughout the whole thing. There's one person who was with me the whole time, and his name is Jesus. I was not alone, friends. I was not alone because he was with me. And he was simply a prayer away. And he still prays for us. And he prays for our return. Notice that he says, I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. Now some people might say, well, Jesus' prayer wasn't answered then. Because in just a little bit after that, Peter did deny Jesus. That means his faith failed did it. The man who stood up on Pentecost would definitely disagree with that. 
Because you are not defined by one little action in your life. By one little failure in your life, you are not defined. Why? Because your faith is not in that one little failure. Your faith is in the one who has never failed. Notice what it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. It says, If we are faithless, He remains faithful. He cannot deny Himself. Think about that last statement. He cannot deny Himself. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, if you have truly been born again by the Holy Spirit of the living God, my friend, then you are a part of the body of Christ. And since you are a part of the body of Christ, He cannot deny Himself. That means He cannot deny you. <laughs> oh, that's rich, isn't it? It's so good to know that we have a Savior who loves us so much that He prays for our return. And He also is faithful even in the moments that we are faithless. Ah. Oh. You know, so many times in those, uh, in, in those uh, retired ministers and widows' lives, they, they tell of the many times where God was just so faithful to them. That couple up there on the, on the screen, Coy and Gene Brown, he, he, he pastored a church in, for 40 years in the inner city of, of Dallas. And he said there were so many times that you just look at the, the things going on in the inner city of Dallas and you just sit there and say, man, the drugs, the alcohol, the possession, the, uh, the, the addiction and everything that is going on around me. It's hard to look up to Jesus when everything around you is a sea of sin. And he said there were times that I'd be preaching to just a few people in the pew. He said, I, had a, I didn't have a mega church, but I had a mega heart and a mega Savior. And he said, over those 40 years, I don't think I earned anything. And he said, but God remained faithful to us the whole time. And even in the times that I blew it, he was still faithful. Oh, my friends, no matter what you have gone through, no matter what you are going through in your life, He prays for your return. And He is faithful. The second thing that we see in this is that Jesus plans for our return. I want you to notice what it says here in, uh, in Luke chapter 22. It says, But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail and when you have returned to me. When you have returned to me. I want you to notice that word when. Jesus didn't say if. He didn't say you could. You might. He said, when? Jesus always draws His children back to Him. The when is going to happen in your life. The when is going to happen in your life. Think about it. If you are truly a believer in Jesus Christ and you have truly been born again by the Spirit of the living God, He says that He holds you in His hand. And since He holds you in His hand, my friend, do you really think that the hands that created the universe, that the one who holds the whole universe in His hands, that you're going to slip out somehow? Or that it's somebody can pluck you out of his hand? No. The when is going to happen. The when is going to happen. He plans for your return. 
Now think about this for a second. This actually gives us a lot of comfort. Because what God basically is saying through His Son is that His grace is greater than anything that you could ever do. His grace is greater than our sin. What an amazing thing. Now, think about this. He also planned for the return of Israel and of the Jews. Notice what it says in Jeremiah chapter 24, verse 7. He says, Then I will give them a, a heart to know Me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be My people, and I will be their God, for they shall return to Me with their whole hearts. He's done it so many times. He's been faithful so many times. Why wouldn't you trust Him to be faithful to do it in your life? The when is going to happen. Man, when you think about that and you think about the when in your life, oh, knowing that His grace is greater than our sin, knowing that, that He is... He is so powerful to, to uh, draw us back to Him at just the right time. There's so many t times when I hear these testimonies of our retired ministers and widows that they tell about the win in their lives. One was Marcos Urbina who lives in Houston. He's uh, 91 years old <laughs> and he's still preaching the gospel. 91 years old. He said that he grew up in, in Mexico and his father was actually a, a, uh, a preacher. And, uh, and he said, we were always poor. He said, I actually saw one of my brothers starve to death because we were so poor. And he said, yeah, my dad would get up there and preach the gospel and he preached to, to houses and he preached to whoever he could. And I sat there and I, I made a decision early in life and then I thought, no, nah, I don't really want that because look what happened to my brother. And he said, he said I, I, I fled, I, I, went, I ran away and I went up to, to the United States and I got a job and I started uh, making a lot of money and so on and so forth. And, and yet there was something inside of me saying, come back to me, come back to me, return to me, return to me. And he said... The when happened in my life where God spoke to me and called me. And he said, and I repented and returned to my first love. And he said, you know what? He said, I didn't care about the money at that point. He said, if, I want, if it was the Lord's will that I starve to death, I was going to starve to death. He said, I was just going to keep preaching until the day that I die. And he said, I'm continuing to do that to this day. I visited him in his home uh, down there in Houston. And uh, it's just this little thing. His, his poor sweet wife was, was uh, not doing well. And he had just come in from preaching that morning. <laughs> sweet man who just loved the Lord and wanted to keep serving until the day that he died. The when happened in his life. And it will happen in you. So he not only prays for our return, he plans for our return, but he also strengthens others through our return. Notice what it says in, in, uh, in Luke chapter 22. It says, And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. That word strengthen in the Greek is where we get the word sterilize. Now think about that for a second. What does it mean to sterilize something? Well, when you have a cut on your, on your hand or something like that, what do you do? You put something on it to sterilize it. Why? So that it doesn't get infected, right? Or you can have something that is infected. And you can clean that wound out and sterilize it so that what? So that it can stay the way it is and stay open and stay, uh, stay infected? No, so that it can heal because that is what sterilization does. Sterilization gets it to the point to where you are strengthened to where your body, which is a magnificent thing, your body is able to take it and do its work 
and grow and be strengthened and become whole again. In other words, what Jesus was saying to Peter is, when you return to me, strengthen others. Let the healing go to other people. Let other people know what has happened to you so that you can be able to strengthen others. With the comfort that you have received, you can be able to give comfort to others. In other words, we're not supposed to keep our return to ourselves. We're supposed to strengthen each other with our return. Now, I don't know about you, but um, during the pandemic, one of the things that, that, that was really tough was not being able to go to church for a couple of weeks. My church actually opened back up pretty early, and we started going back immediately. And I, I'll be honest. I missed the hugging. <laughs> I missed the hugging. Not too long ago, I was in a church, and they... Uh, actually had the welcome time and everybody stood up and they were hugging each other and people came up to me and they hugged me they didn't know who I was they didn't know where I had been or anything else they didn't know that I had flown in last night all they knew was that I was there and they were going to hug me and it felt good it felt good I loved it I started to tear up because I was sitting there going, man, this is great. We're, we're getting back to normal again. As believers in Jesus Christ, we're actually okay with touching each other. And Jesus does the same thing with us spiritually. He continues to touch us no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing. He's continuing to strengthen us encourage us, draw us closer, and we are to do the same thing with each other. In other words, when you see someone struggling out there, help them back to being who they are in Jesus Christ. Help them back. Strengthen them. Helen Johnson is one of our widows. She served with her... Um, with her husband for 61 years. And uh, after he passed away, she moved to Garland, Texas, which uh, is just outside of Dallas. And uh, she moved there to be closer to her daughter. And she joined First Baptist Garland. And they said, uh, they said Helen, what, can you, uh, what would you like to do here at First Baptist Garland? And she said, put me somewhere where I can share Jesus with people. So they had a battered women's shelter. And she became the greeter of the battered women's shelter. Over the last two and a half years, she has led over 50 young ladies to Christ. 50 young ladies. And you know what she said? She said, after my husband died, I was so hurt. I didn't know where, what, I, what my ministry was going to be. We had done things together for so long that I didn't know what I was going to do. But that battered women's shelter was the place where God put me to strengthen other people, to help other people to come to Christ, to help other people to, to know Him. And my friends, your strengthening, your return is not meant to be for yourself. It is to be meant to... Go to other people to strengthen them. So He prays for our return. He plans our return. And He strengthens others through our return. Will you return to Jesus today? Will you return to Jesus today? He's waiting. The win for you may be today. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Some of you might say, well, what do I need to do today? How do I return to Him? 
The same thing that I am saying to you today is what was given to the churches in Revelation. Repent. Repent. Turn away from your sin. Turn to Him. Some of you might be saying, well, I've never received Christ as Lord and Savior today. My friend, today is the day. Today is your win. That you might be able to turn to Him today. If you're here today and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, today is the day to come to Him. So how do you do it? Acts 3.19 says, Repent then and turn to God that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. You must repent. Make a 180 in your life. No longer will you serve yourself and sin. You will turn and serve Jesus. And then Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. And Romans 10.13 says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So will you call on Him right now, repenting of your sin and confessing Him as the Lord of your life, believing in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead? If so, pray a prayer much like this. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank You for dying on the cross for me. Thank You for rising from the dead. Lord, I believe in You. Lord, you know that I'm a sinner, that I've done wrong. I repent. I turn to you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. If you prayed a prayer much like that and you gave your life to Christ in just a few moments when we stand and we sing, Brother Curtis will be here at the front. Come and let him know that you prayed to him and receive Christ today. There might be others of you here today who are really struggling with, with returning to your first love. Whatever it is, my friend, repent. Turn away from it. Give it to the Lord. He's prayed for it. He's planned for it. Now it's time for you to receive it and strengthen others with it. There might be others of you here who are searching for a church home and this is the place that God has led you to. My friend, today, come. Lord God, move as only you can. Have your own way. I pray that you would strengthen each and every person that they have met with you by the time of the end of this service. That they have met with you personally. And that they have changed. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand and come? So house. Thank you, Aaron, for uh, being here with us this morning. We so appreciate you. Let's join hands across the aisle. As we go, I do want you to know that the flowers on the altar this morning are given by the family of Patsy Seeley in memory of her. And uh, so we thank them for allowing us to, uh, to have those here during this time. And as we go, Cliff Schroeder, would you dismiss us in prayer?
Just to you, the Lord turn.